So now we're getting ready to do the marbling technique. The marbling technique follows the same principles as the color meshing technique done with the woolly. So if you are interested in doing this, you should watch the color meshing portion of the video as how to prepare your paints and your tools. But the only difference is, as, apply, as opposed to applying the paints in splotches randomly, we're going to apply the paints in a diagonal fashion. This gives us a backdrop that's appropriate for veining. I'm going to take my big brush and begin by applying my first color. I'm going to go ahead and apply it in a diagonal fashion, like so. Now the way I apply the paints is I kind of like to just roll them off the brush. If you're not comfortable with that, you can apply them just like so. You don't need to have your line going perfectly diagonally. It can get fatter in some points and thinner in others. That's entirely up to you. And sometimes they even connect. Taking my same brush, going into my second color, go ahead and fill in some of the open areas by applying more diagonal lines using the brush. Like so. Now we can stop with two colors or we can keep adding more colors. And I think I'm actually just going to add a little bit of gray here and there. Now what's different from this technique to the color meshing technique is the color meshing technique we brushed randomly. With this, we're actually going to brush in a diagonal fashion, just like so. Spreading the paints out, then we're going to take the woolly, and again, different than the color meshing technique, as opposed to tapping randomly, I'm going to go ahead and tap in the diagonal pattern following the lines that we created with the paints. Going back and forth, you can go back and forth a little bit, but primarily following the lines that you've created. Now what's interesting is the, the color meshing technique I actually prefer very blended and very muted, whereas the marbling technique I prefer it to look very raw and textured looking because it does have another step following this step. And it, just like the color meshing technique, if there's an area that you'd like to see a little bit more of one color or another color, go ahead and add it. Now this looks fabulous how it is, and you can just leave it. But to complete the look of marble, there's one more step, and that's done with the marble veining feather. But before we can do that step, we do need to allow this surface to dry. So that's what we're going to do, and we'll be right back. In order to prepare the paints to do the marble veining with the marble veining feather, you're going to want to use a measuring cup and mix one cup of paint with three cups of water. Stir it up and you're ready to go. We're ready now to do the marble veining using the marble veining feather, which is basically a turkey feather. Now what's interesting about this is we've got this whole big feather, but the only part we're actually going to use is the very tip. I'm going to dip it into my paint water mixture, wipe off the excess, I'm going to use the tip of the feather to basically draw a marble vein on the wall, like so. Now one thing that you do want to do is, if you notice, I'm jagging it to create the line here. What a common mistake is, is often people just pull it and make kind of a, I call it the shoelace effect, where it looks like this. You don't want that type of effect. You want it very jagged like it's just cut through marble or granite. Twist it and turn it as you're dragging. 
Now if you notice I'm shaking a lot as I'm doing it, you want to do that. If it's helpful for you, a lot of people use their left hand if they're right-handed or use their right hand if they're left-handed to create the marble veins. They also can go in any particular direction that you want them to go. Now notice here I've kind of followed the background layout that we've uh, done. But this here, I'm actually going to just cut it right across where it connects up with the pre-existing vein. Now this is something, a technique that you might want to get a piece of poster board and sit down and practice before you actually go on the wall. But once you get it, once you do a little bit of practicing, it just clicks and it's really very quick and very easy, not to mention beautiful. Well, the marbling technique is finished and it's really quite easy. It's certainly beautiful. So when you're doing this technique or thinking about rooms to put it in, think about powder rooms, accent walls, anywhere that you want high drama.